Here I am wanting to record a video and look who's in the space where I want to put the camera. I've clicked the cat over to the side, so I've got space now for the <laughs> camera. Um, so the votes came in for what video you'd like to see, what song you'd like me to look at, uh, and for sure is the winner. Um, for sure started out as um, just a little idea, which I loved the sort of melody and chord that I had as for the initial idea, but I wasn't sure that it was actually any good at all or that anyone would like it. So I decided just to make a one minute long version and use it as the intro to my album, my second album, Hands and Boys Club. Um, and then something crazy happened and everyone kept messaging me saying stop teasing us with this one minute thing um, where's the full song which was amazing to me because I literally just thought it was a throwaway thing so I went away and wrote a second verse and a middle eight and generally finished it off and a huge thank you to those people that um, messaged me to say that they wanted the full length version because I'm really happy with how it came out um, and I would never have done that if it hadn't been for you guys. Um, I often do that with my songs. There's another song of mine called Back to Love, which I just thought was just the most average throwaway. Will I even use this song at any point? Um, and it's just become this huge thing that everyone really likes. And to me, I just thought it was a throwaway song. So obviously I know nothing. Um, I should just lis listen to you guys instead. Um, anyway, for sure, I've got the session up um, on the computer and I'll just go into the writing of the song and the stuff that I used in the making of it. Um, it might get a bit boring and technical at some point. I don't know what exactly you guys want to see about it, but um, let's have a look and we'll go from there. T-shirts available online, by the way, at laflexmusic.com. <laughs> okay, let's go. So here we are in the session. Um, Pretty simple actually it's quite it's quite a complicated song chordally and harmonically but the, it's, the production itself is um, pretty straightforward so we'll start off at the beginning here there's no more excuses so straight away um, we've got this electric piano which is uh, an FM8 piano um, and what I've done the initial striking of the chord I've bounced to audio and then reversed and turned it into a little ramp which is that so it leads into it which is a cool little thing to do uh, and that is backed throughout by something on a tail sampler just a little backing thing to the uh, piano there um, and then lead vocal there's no more excuses uh, um, again you've seen me do this in other videos I like to take the certain lines or words copy them so for example here I've taken this line I've copied it to the track below and moved it over by a beat so you get a delay coming in Excuses. which you can only hear very slightly Excuses. I can and it just adds a little something to the end of the lines a bit of interest which is cool lead vocal as always got the super lush RC24 reverb on my absolute favourite reverb um, native instruments um, and that's the beginning of the song we go into the for so, long. for so long section and I add a little pad which I think is from the wave station no it's from the M1 
Okay, so let's scroll up and see <laughs> the immense length of backing vocals. Um, right, so let's look at the backing vocals. What I will do is I'm going to reach over to this camera here and change the angle. Okay, so when it comes to the backing vocals, the chords are going like an A minor seven to an E minor seven. It's actually a, an E6, we'll call that an E6 for now. Although actually when I play with the bass note, it's something else. Um, anyway, so can you imagine, it's four notes and let's make that four actual human voices. So each note represents a voice. So, so the, the lowest voice is gonna go. Duh, duh, duh. Next voice is this finger. It's gonna go. And so on. This voice is gonna say. Uh, so. And then the last voice is this top note, which I think is pretty much gonna stay the same. So you then record that. Uh, as a backing vocal part, like so, I'll show you now. Okay, so here we are looking at the vocals. So the first four will be uh, the first note that I sang, and then on the second four I would have done an octave on top of that, which is the same thing, but at, uh, higher. So let's have a listen to those. And then the second finger, or the next note, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, will be this. Eventually you do all of them, and it sounds like... And then you add that to the lead vocal. Baby, ah. There you go, and then this, it's the uh, same, same thing again on the chorus. Easy as that. Okay, so that's the backing vocals. Now, into the chorus here. Um, I'm using this pad, which is the same pad I used for Ron Contra, my other song. It's uh, coming from the Tao Juno. It's a little sound I made myself. Um, it sort of sounds quite out of tune when you play it on its own. But within the track, it fills that space really nicely. Um, combine that with the Monarch bass, which is like a Moog type bass. And here we go. I got plans for you, put my hands on you. And there's a little bell thing, which is actually a famous Roland D50 sound. Staccato Heaven. Um, and then the BVs again, the same parts, but obviously a different lyric on the for sure line. Okay, so second verse, um, I'm bringing drums in. Now let's isolate the drums, which are here. Two bars. Now, what's a cool little trick that I'm using on the drums is uh, a delay. Um, if I double click on the drum part, the, the snare, I'll turn the delay off for a start. The snare on its own, but I've got a delay coming in here with the volume down. You can just hear that little tiny double of the snare. Um, and then the same again for the hi-hats. If I go to the part, there's the delay there. The hi-hat part is just playing four. But I've got a delay coming in with the volume. You can see the color, the volume is lower. And when you put the delay in, 
get this cool little dynamic. Now you can program that in, but I think the delay way of doing it works uh, much better. Um, for me anyway. So that's pretty cool. The drums are in. Um, and the bass we've already seen is now been entered. Uh, we come to the second chorus. Pretty much the same as the first, and then we reach the middle eight. If I should reveal my heart to you, would you turn me Let's look at the strings because I'm glad I wrote this middle eight. I was, you know, asked to finish the song because I love middle eights in songs, and I always think that I write good ones, and this is one of my favourites. Um, so the string parts here. So for strings, um, I'm using, I'm doubling the parts once with Omnisphere, uh, the Hollywood Studio strings, which are awesome, and then I'm doubling it with uh, the Roland I. Uh, cloud strings. If you go to, the, if you subscribe to Roland Cloud, you get all these plugins and the legato violins from that. programming the strings. So a great tip for string arrangements. Um, if you listen to the chords to that part on the electric piano, they're just getting plonked down on the beat. Okay, nothing of real interest, they're just there so you can hear the chords. Um, a big mistake people make when trying to arrange like a string part is they'll get a great string sound like the Hollywood strings or whatever we've got there but they'll treat it like a pad they'll just play it just plain down when strings are constantly meant to move if you think of a string section as being like um, like a cello, viola, violins etc independent players playing different ranges so the strings that I've got here are actually playing those chords but they're moving between the chords um, to make it sound like it's actual string players playing. around um, and they sound much more realistic uh, and then quickly I'll show you this before going into the last chorus Baby, I got plans for you. so here this is the first line of the chorus Baby, I got so I've taken for example a tiny little bit of the note like that I've bounced it to its own track and then put a huge reverb on it and then recorded just the reverb to give me this and then I've ramped it with a crossfade so it's a reversed reverb of that note if that makes sense and then that gives you this sort of anticipation slide into uh, the note here baby I got plans for you all these little touches that just uh, are pretty cool um, and then that's it I think just doubles around at the end of the chorus Ooh, oh, that it's you that I love for sure
fun. Um, so yeah, it's um, chordally and sort of harmonically and melodically, it's quite in depth. Um, I really like it, but production-wise, it's like there's nothing really there. So um, kept it simple. But so thanks again for um, voting for this one, um, and there'll be another one up next week. I hope. I hope you've had fun. I've not bored you to tears too much. Um, and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye. And it's you that I love for sure.